All right, guys. I hope the next time I show you this, it'll be up and running. Uh, let me update you on what I've done thus far. Um, I think I showed you it coming back and forth, or I did some uh, measurements on there, accuracy measurements. Uh, let me show you what I've done since then. Uh, just now, I completed the water cooling loop here. So essentially, I'm just using a five gallon bucket with, how much water is this? Uh, 2.5 gallons right now. It's filled up about, you know, halfway. There's a, a little like garden sump pump in there that came with this kit. Um, I took um, one quarter, this is like three eighths, or not three eighths tubing, three eighths OD tubing. I don't know what the ID is, I forget what it is. But um, essentially that just squeezed real tight on there with a heat gun, I helped expand it. Um, essentially this goes into there. This is like a, um, like it has a, a screw on reverse thread bushing that fit this perfectly. I just kind of found it at Lowe's and I did one for the inlet. So it's just trickling water in there. This, uh, this one has this one on this side and on the other side. So that way the pump can go directly into it. Then it goes out. Anyway, follows the track, comes up here, goes around, goes in there, comes all the way up here and into here. I've checked, I'm checking right now for leaks. It's been running for about 20 minutes without any leaks. So it's looking good. I had to fix, I actually had to use some, and I know it's not the right stuff to use. Uh, I had to use some of this guy, some of this Teflon tape on the threads because it would just trickle leak just right up along this edge here. And you can kind of see that I put some on there. I think there's just a cavity in there and it's working its way up through the threads and that's why it came out there. So that's been updated. Um, I've since put on my spoil board, I think since my major update I showed you last, I might have posted some pictures of this already. Um, I'm gonna have some hold downs that I bought for this. So just go in here, and it'll slide all along there. It can hold a work piece down, just set it and then, you know, lock it down. Um, I have semi trammed the spindle you can see it needed uh, like a two thousandths shim on the back side here so this actually wound up being perfect for the shim um and it wound up being exactly right when i even when i compressed it so it worked out great so this is just blue painters tape worked out perfectly I, I didn't have metal shims to work with today so uh and then i corrected it and you'll notice i have some some uh markings here i didn't have a piece of glass i'm still planning on getting a piece of glass and checking my work but essentially I took a, um, what I use for checking flat surfaces, which is this guy. So it has a machine surface here and you just set it down. And so I was referencing and see how I traced out a mark there and then I circled where it would be perfect. And let me uh, uh, verify this here. So if I go here, you'll see it's at zero. All right, so then if I move here, it's also at zero. So I use that as a, mark, a point to tram these two points, like right here and right here to tram the, um, let's call it the y-axis uh, of the um, spindle. So that's perfectly level that way. That's why I had to add that 2000 shim. And then I found another spot and you'll notice I use this air, like the tip of this arrow and the tip of that arrow or well, I think it was more of the circle. Those two spots were exactly the same plane. So I used that to tram the X. And so I got that perfectly level. Uh, oops, hit that with my knee. That's what it's there for. Um, so that is now level. So hopefully I'm getting really close to cutting. Um, other updates I made, um, I have all my soft limit switches installed. I Those are all shielded. Um, I also created I'm sorry, I, those are my hard limits. Those are limit switches that will stop it from running itself off the track and destroying itself. Then I, inst I also set up soft limits. And then those two switches, this switch over here, right here, and this switch right here are my homing switches. I, it took a while for me to get it perfectly square. I ju just checked it last night. So I have it perfectly square, at least down to like the 64th. Um, I couldn't you know, it's better to measure over long distance. So I used my uh, um, straight edge there that's uh, 24 inches long. I was able to get a 16 inch measurement across to make sure it was square. 
Um, so I used a nine in it, a nine Y, 12 over, and then it should get 16 across. That's the three, four, five method. Um, let's see, um, I'm sorry. Uh, make sure I did my math right. It was, I'm sorry. It was 12, 16, 25. That's what it was, I'm sorry. <laughs> math is terrible, right? Let me make sure that's right too. No, that's wrong. Let's do it again. 12, it's three times four. Four times four is 16. Five times four is 20, so it's 20. That's the three, four, five method. Let's do the math again, Eric. <laughs> anyway, um, I think we are getting super close to running this thing. Uh, I am gonna do a test run of etching. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna work on the computer side here shortly, so I'm gonna be working with a lot of software um, just to kind of figure out, I wanna etch, I wanna get a grid on here that's like a one by one grid. So show me inch by inch across. So before I surface this, which I'm also waiting for a two inch bit, I have a one, I have a half inch bit, but I don't really want a big, a big bit. So this will go faster. Um, so once I surface this, I want, I want to first do a test, see if I can get it to etch like a grid. And then, and that will be like two thousands of an inch. So I'll be able to see it, but I won't be able to really feel it much. And then what I'll do is when I actually surface this, I'll do like 10 thousandths or 20 thousandths of an inch. Um, you'll notice these are all steel screws, but these are out of range of the CNC. It's the same on the backside. I literally just drilled all these holes and these are, these go, goodness. Let's see if I can get my, see my lead's not even far enough to go. Let's see here. These go that far deep. So that's about um, close to half an inch. Sorry, I'm measuring. Yeah, it's actually over half an inch. So it's just, just over half an inch. So that should give me plenty of depth, but I also have, uh, I read online that um, things like brass or other types of metals that are much softer like aluminum would be good in here. So what I did is ordered brass screws. So all I'm trying to do is just make sure that these don't flex up like I can, not that one, but this one especially, I can see a little, I don't know if you can see that. You can see a little bounce back there. So I'm just trying to get it down low, down tight, just to make sure that I'm not gonna have any um, issues with like it bouncing back whenever it goes over it. So I'm just gonna tie all those down with brass screws I have coming in the mail. Um, so I've trammed the, tra uh, trammed the, sorry, this is a long video guys, just to explain stupid stuff. I've trammed this so it's perfectly square to the table. So it's square this way and it's square this way. So it's sitting directly over the table. Um, and that will be revealed when I actually do a cut on the surface when I surface this. So I'll probably do a light pass just to see, or I might do it on a scrap piece of wood. Actually, that's probably what I'll do. Then um, got the water cooling going, got two and a half gallons in there, pumping through the spindle, no leaks here, no leaks down there, which is great. Um, it's running out of there. I had an electrical issue. I, I think I told you about this. I had arc faults in here. Um, I went and changed out just one circuit. So this is still arc faulted and ground fault. This circuit, which is three, and there's one other plug over there, right there, um, that has circuit three on it, is ground faulted. And the reason for that is my spindle would trip it every time I turn it on. Anything over like four, even if it ran on 400 um, RPMs, it still tripped it after like a couple seconds. So now I can come over here and enable this and go here, just go M3, let's go S1200 and we'll run it. There, oh, it's got the uh, nut on there, I wanna stop that. That could be, that could come loose cause it's not super tight on there. Usually I take this nut off cause it can uh, unscrew itself. So anyway, um, that didn't trip anything. I haven't ran it for an extended long time yet, but uh, I plan to. Uh, let's just give you guys a good little view. And if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comments. Um, there's a side view. I got all my cabling down there. It goes into the box. I'll give you a little quick look at that. Got all my cable routing for the Y axis and then, or the drag links for the Y axis with all my cables in it and my hoses. And then here's the uh, X axis. And then obviously this is plenty of slack. I can always pull a little bit more, plenty of slack to go down and up for the Z 
and uh, it's pretty, this one, uh, the power cable for the spindle is pretty rigid. So make sure that's super tight. Um, so it should be all supported with that. It's pretty well, uh, pretty, pretty good shape. Um, outside of that, let's show you the box. I got my, just my power switch here. Let me see, uh, uh, this is the, oh shoot, I always forget what this one's called. The, it's a pump, it's a charge pump. So if I press this in, this disables all the motors, all the uh, everything, um, disables the spindle, and it signals mock to stop the operation. So it does that, which is great. You can kind of see I got a clear cover here. I, that's why I can so I can see if I have any like extra dust in there. Um, that way I know if I need to clean it out. Got fans on the side there. Got a fan control which just runs on max all the time. And here are all my plugs. Um, these two are for uh, added. Um, I have a uh, homing, like a Z homing clock coming in, and then this is supposed to be an additional sensor for something else. I will probably get changed because I realized I only had um, sensors for like different axes. I didn't have it for the X plus X minus. I just had to do everything like on X minus. So I had to use like a, a sensor override or a, what's it called? Someone's, someone's yelling at me on the screen, just saying it. I have to look at the screen real quick. It's a uh, axis limit, axes limit override to back it off of the X plus or Y plus uh, sensors. Um, outside of that, everything is functional. Um, I was able to, to uh, repeat repeat measurements down to the thousandth. So um, there was a variance of like point, let's see, it'd be two ten thousandths. So there's a variation of two ten thousandths. And then in addition to that, um, I do have some play, not like an extreme amount. I think it was four thousandths or six thousandths when I, I think it was four thousandths altogether when I um so I have some slop in my um in my gantry which uh you know down the road I have plans or ideas of how I want to upgrade that um but this is uh, the simplest home built plywood CNC the hardest part literally just getting these lined up with the gantry so everything would line up and connect without any um bending of the rods or I'm sorry the ball screws or um, getting these mounted perfectly straight and, you know, getting all these holes tapped exactly the same width. You'll notice that there's a couple screws missing because those were, um, errors on my part because those are such machine. It's such a precise measurement, but there's so many of these. It's like, it, it worked out great. I mean, it's, it's super sturdy. It's strong. The strongest part of this whole build is literally this because of how many screws are in all these rails. So, um, Outside of that, guys, I think I'm going to start working on the computer stuff. Um, this should be set up to load some G-code. I got to get familiar with this interface more. Um, I got to learn how to use a couple of programs, primarily Fusion 360, but I've looked at a couple of the Carve, um, Carve uh, uh, programs. So I'm still, I'm gonna, I, my first task is going to be trying to do that grid. Second task is going to be doing a surfacing and doing the grid. And then third task will be um, creating a dust shoe. Oh, that was the other thing. I haven't done any dust collection, if you, have, if you haven't noticed. So <clears throat> um, I'm contemplating either building that first or surfacing this to make sure that when I do do that, it's perfect. Um, I bought like two of everything, so it should be okay uh, if I try to do it first because it's plastic. So I'll be doing a plastic shoe um, Avid CNC has something on their website that shows you how to do it in a video and shows you the parts list that you need. So I, I bought all those pieces and I'll be able to hopefully machine it on here. They even give you the Fusion 360 file so you can modify it to your spindle. If you need, like this is an 80 millimeter spindle. I think theirs was like a, for a router, it's like 85. So it won't be very big modifications, but um, yeah, this is gonna be a, a beast to learn. Um, <laughs> I think, to be honest, I really think the first project I do is some kind of quick letter carving and proof of concept, really, just to show my wife. <laughs> but outside of that, yeah, those are the main tasks. I want to get dust collection on this thing, uh, get the sp surface, the spoil board surfaced, um, and then get that grid on there, and then, you know, slowly learn how to use software so I don't screw anything up. So that is all, guys. Uh, you know, I'm nine seconds short of 15, so... Like last video, 
we'll see you later.